What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here. On today's edition of Gear Gods Quality Control, we're going to be taking a look at the Ray 34 bass from Sterling by Music Man. First, I'm going to show you some of the different tones that you can get out of this thing, and then I'm going to talk about it a little bit. So here it is, everything at noon. I'm going to crank up the treble all the way. All the way down. All right, set that back to noon. Here's the, the mid knob. Here it is all the way down, scooping the mids all the way up. Back to noon. Here's the bass knob all the way up. Here it is all the way down. Now I'm going to try boosting everything just a bit, really push the pickup a bit. Now for a slightly more classic tone, I'm going to take the treble down a bunch, crank up the mid-range a bit, and give it a little more bass. Picking up this bass for the first time was actually kind of a terrifying experience for me. And the reason for that is that this bass on feel alone is almost indistinguishable from the many Stingray basses that I have played from Ernie Ball. And the reason for that is that this bass is made in Indonesia and then imported to the US. It's set up here by Tex from Sterling by Music Man, but it's a full Asian import that feels as close as you could possibly humanly get to the real deal. Okay, so this particular model, this is new for 2019. It's a, a poplar burl with sort of a transparent black finish, satin, which I like a lot. It's got this cool transparent pick guard. Sterling by Music Man humbucker pickup. Three band active EQ, you can see we've, it takes a nine volt battery. A rosewood 
fingerboard, and then this roasted maple neck, which is pretty fancy, uh, once again, for an import. Everything about this is fancy pants for a guitar that's only about $800. This is a, a, a veneer. This is not like a big, thick top, and you know, this, that's sort of a thing that you tend to get on, on a cheaper bass, but it looks freaking great. Actually, I don't know that I've seen an Ernie Ball Music Man that has a finish like this at all. So I don't know if this is exclusive to Sterling by Music Man, but it looks awesome. I mean, you can't tell me that that doesn't look real sick. In fact, the top is so cool, they had to make the pick guard clear so that you could see all of it. Otherwise, they would just be covering up some of the awesome finish. This is kind of a typical thing that they'll do to sort of mask the fact that it's not a great big thick top. They'll uh, blend in the edges to hide the fact that it's a veneer. But, you know, once again, that's just something you do to keep the costs down so that you can get more bass out of your bass. Because if you're really worried about having some huge thick poplar top, then uh, you're probably gonna buy a more expensive bass anyways. But if what you're concerned about is something that looks really cool and gets the job done for under a ridiculous amount of money, in this case, less than $1,000, you'd be hard pressed to find something that plays and looks this good. You may recall that I reviewed an Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray that had two humbuckers last year. It was like a cream white one. That one was also incredibly sick. Aside from the fact that this one has four strings and that one was five and there were two humbuckers on it, if you put this in my hands blindfolded and asked me to pick out which one was which, on feel alone, I would not be able to tell you. They both play pretty much identically well. Just the, the solidness of them, um, the feel and everything, is as close to identical as it's gonna get from a sort of lower priced import and an American made bass. So, <laughs> I mean, come on. Another one up that this has on a lot of Stingrays that I've seen is a matching headstock. So it's basically just more of that poplar burl with the trans black satin finish that's on here. It looks great and it plays amazing right out of the box. I think that has something to do with the fact that it's manufactured in Indonesia and then set up in the United States. So it's, so, it's sort of like, almost like a hybrid type of a build. Of course, anything made overseas, they do that to save money. You know, it's a lot cheaper to have the labor done in Asia and then just the final setup and quality control in the US. The only thing that I found about this base that was a little bit of a, I, I don't even want to call it a shortcoming, just something that could be improved, this pickup is like pretty good, it's not great. It's just that since I've played the Ernie Ball ones, when I plugged that one in, it was like instant like, oh my God, this is amazing. I didn't quite get that from this one. I got a lot of really good sounds out of it. You heard the tones that I got out of it. I mean, you'll have to decide for yourself. Other than that, the only thing that I think could be improved doesn't even really qualify as a shortcoming, just something uh, that I wish that it had. When I did the review of the Ernie Ball Stingray, the 2018, they improved the tuner pegs in a way they, they were like a little bit thicker and then tapered, and they feel amazing and it's really hard for me to go back to the flat ones. I didn't even know that I'd miss them until they were gone. I mean, these are the same tuning pegs that have been used on the Stingray bass since the 70s when the thing was designed, and it was only in 2018 that they upgraded them. So really, you're not missing a whole lot, especially if you have not experienced the tapered ones, you probably wouldn't even notice. They do the job, there's nothing wrong with them at all, except that they're not. <laughs> the nicer ones. In conclusion, for $800, this bass is crazy rad. It sounds pretty good, and then everything else about it is real sick. It feels just like a Stingray, like just like the $2,000, you know, made in the USA Stingray bass from Ernie Ball. And if you can, in a blindfold test, tell the difference between this and the well over two times the price Ernie Ball base, then uh, I will give you a dollar. Calling that the one dollar challenge. Don't hold me to that, I don't even have one dollar to give you. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you haven't already, mash that subscribe button and smack the bell for more reviews and original content. And if you'd like to join our Patreon cult with these fine individuals and get your name in the credits just like these guys, you're gonna wanna head over to patreon.com slash gear gods. You'll find all kinds of cool stuff over there, behind the scenes, tabs, raw mix tracks, and more. So I'll see you real soon.